Hey Alltown Nation, welcome back to the channel. Got a question for you. Okay, this is also obvious. Who here can afford to waste your time? I don't think anybody likes to waste their time, but unfortunately in the world of programming, if you don't know what you're doing or if you aren't able to uh, recognize certain software issues, you can waste an abundant of amount of time. So in this case study, I'm going to share with you several uh, scenarios on how I was able to reduce a client's time by recognizing certain software issues that will allow the client to get the end result. All right. With that, guys, let's jump into it. So we're going to look at a case study on GM and Ford programming obstacles with the Autel J2534. I'm your host, Curtis Harden, and I will be doing this presentation. I sell the tool and I render the support that you'll see right here. Now, the first case study we got today is the uh, Maxisys Elite's J2534 on a 2013 Chevy Tahoe. The client wanted to program a fuel pump control module and he installed the module, went to do the programming, and while doing the programming, he had this error called an M695 that came up in the GM software. And he was not able to continue the programming procedure. So that's when he gave me a call and I'm gonna share with you in just a minute on what I did to resolve that issue. Now, the fuel pump control module received the desired fuel pressure message from the engine control and it controls the fuel pump located within the fuel tank to achieve the desired fuel pressure. Now, when you install, theoretically, when you install a new control module, they are blank, so you need to program it, all right? The removal instructions are quite simple. You need to remove the spare tire and then you also need to loosen up the fasteners from the slotted bracket and then you're good to go. Now to the programming. First thing we're gonna do, we're gonna select uh, reprogram ECU. And there's two options, there's reprogram ECU. I use that when it's a new module. Um, and we're gonna ID the vehicle here. Quite self-explanatory. All right, and then it should auto detect the VIN number here. Sometimes it doesn't, and we're gonna pick the module that we're gonna program. And after we pick it, it's gonna communicate and take us to a summary menu, which you see here. Everything in green is gonna program. And this is where we get the magnificent, magnificent error, the M6954. So I'm just gonna read this out to you because it's quite small. So. Calibrations marked with an asterisk are not recognized by the TIS to web release. They are either newer, what is that what is available on the TIS to web uh, release, or they are non-GM calibrate uh, calibrations. In plain English, guys, I'm going to explain to, to you this as if you're a four-year-old. Alright. When a manufacturer uh, produces a control unit, sometimes they put like a dummy software into it, all right? It doesn't have the vehicle's VIN, it's just like some general software filler. And what happens is when you click reprogram at the beginning of the GM software, it's not able to take out that dummy software, delete it, move it, and install the, the original GM software. It's not able to do that. So the trick here is, I'm gonna show it you now, you need to select replace and reprogram. So I'm gonna click the replace and reprogram right there. And what it does is replace and reprogram, you, you typically do this when you have an existing module in the vehicle and the software prompts you to do it. So we don't have that old module. You, you keep that, that, that new module installed in there, but replacement or program will take out that dummy software, clean it up, delete it, and then it will download uh, the calibration file from the uh, GM servers, all right? This, I've seen 
a long time ago before, but when I first saw it, you know, I didn't know what to do. Um, now that I've done a lot of programming events, I was able to recognize this and pass this information on to my client and he was able to do the programming procedure, which you're going to see here. All right, he's going to click next and you can see we're already there programming. All right, let me just speed it up. All right, so there we go, prints this out, job done. Now. Next, we got installation errors, my favorite, <laughs> all right? GM has recently been updating their website and their software, and when they do that, they don't give you like a manual on how to fix the situation, all right? So it kind of makes it a bit challenging. So this one, we're working on a 2014 Chevy Cavalier, and the client simply wants to program the PCM. Now, he purchased his IM608, and he wanted to use a J254 because he told me that he was getting, been getting like maybe five to ten uh, programming inquiries. And uh, he attempted to, to install the software himself and he was getting an installation error that would not, would not allow him to do the programming um, at all. So he called customer support and they did not get back to him and he had to get this car out. So that's when he gave me a call, he, he hired me and this is how I rectified the situation. All right, so this is the error. Um, unable to launch the application. Now, this is due to the fact that they updated their software, uh, GM, and it produced a file. All right, I think it's called an SPO file. And what I, to get this fixed, I had to go and delete it. All right, I found it in his uh, uh, folder and I deleted it. Now when we click start SPS, then it's able to upload Java and then he's good to go. All right, and you can see we're connecting, bada boom, bada bing, he gets the software installed. Now what's funny is, if you look at the previous video, all right, that was done maybe a, a few weeks ago. Um, this one that I'm going to show you now, all right, let me see. The menu changed, all right. GM updated their software again, and I'm going to share with you right here. You see that? That wasn't there a few weeks ago. They, 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 they have another menu where you select your J box before you get that prior. You know what I mean? So it's a constant evolution even Autel does this like there's been times where let's say a client uh, updates their uh, software on their tool and then their VCI is not working all right it's they, they need to update their VCI to get it to communicate back to the vehicle to the to the to their tablet so with software guys it's always evolving always evolving and um, many times with the OEMs, if you don't have your software up to date or their software up to date, you're going to get like glitches and stuff like that. You're not going to be able to, to go through. So yeah, the client was able to do it and, um, you know, another job well done by the client. All right. Now this one, I get a lot. All right. And programming not fixing the issue all right so some clients they'll they'll do certain things and they think that an update will do it i don't know where they get the the uh indication that they need to update to fix the problem but they come to me and they say kurt i need it fixed and you know i'll program it for them or i'll help them do that so this guy wanted to oh man hold on let me fix something as i was saying this particular client was working on a 1999 Ford Explorer and he had several issues. Um, his J254 software was out of date and he wanted to program the PCM in order to uh, relearn the key. All right, so let me, let me give you a little background so it all makes sense. Um, what happened was Clients simply wanted to, to add a key to the vehicle. The vehicle was working perfectly fine. And the client, his client wanted him to just add on a key. Now, while attempting the procedure, the, the immobilizer system 
wouldn't accept the key. So after scanning the vehicle, a permanent fault occurred in the PCM and the client concluded that programming the PCM would remedy the error code. All right. So first thing I did was updated his uh, Maxi uh, Flash J2534 software. And um, once that was fixed, um, when you're dealing with PCMs, especially new ones, on the, the GMs, when you program it, or after you get a new one, you need to program it, and then uh, you need to do a parameter reset, then relearn the keys to the patch, okay? We're not installing a new PCM on this one, all right? We're just updating the software, so we don't need to do the parameter reset. But this is a rule when you're programming PCMs for this particular vehicle, all right? Um, the PCM on this vehicle is located on the back here. I don't know if you could see it. It's right here, number four. And uh, when you take it out, you gotta disconnect the, the, the ground cable, the battery ground cable. Uh, disconnect the powertrain control module from the electrical connector. And then lastly, remove the nuts from the PCM cover and then you can pull it right out, all right? So, to the programming. So the first thing we did was uh, we programmed the module. So I went to module programming. Okay, let me speed it up a bit. And uh, I went to programmable module installation. All right, so, sometimes I, I use that because I find it works out a bit better, even though we're not switching the modules. All right, so it takes us engine on, engine off. Uh, we got a little error code. No biggie, we just did it again. Set ignition switch to off, on, then we reprogram. I sped it up a bit. Tells up to turn it off, on, off, on. Calibration has been loaded and checked. If you program a 6.8, all right, doesn't, that doesn't apply to us. All right, and then what did it say here? Start engine, do, do not depress the throttle. All right, so we're going off and on, clearing fault codes, and we're done with the programming. Now, we're gonna see if that erased the error code and will allow us to uh, relearn this key. All right, so that was the programming. Now we're doing the Pat's key relearning. Now, sometimes the manufacturer's software will allow you to uh, do key related issues with the Pat's, all right? Not all the time, sometimes, and even with the Altel, sometimes it doesn't have it and vice versa, you know? But um, it's a 10 minute waiting procedure. We wait 10 minutes. I'm not gonna do that to you guys, don't worry. All right, security access has been granted. And then what I do is I go to program additional key. And you're gonna see here, there's gonna be a couple of weird scenarios. All right, place the unprogrammed patch key into the ignition and turn the position on and that's what we did all right and then you click the checkbox it's gonna do its thing apparently this test has found a fault all right so we're like what the heck and then we click next DTC detected all right and then you know I said okay let's try something else ignition key code erase I just tried to erase it just to see and then I think we get uh, no communication. Diagnostic tester is unable to, to communicate with the module. So I'm like, man, something's wrong. <laughs> something's horribly wrong. So whip out the scanner. Let's see what we got. Go to the PCM module, read codes. All right, and we got two codes. This one right here, the P1260. And this basically means we got three possible problem uh, in, our, in our hands. So we got a suspect passive anti theft system or a suspect circuit between the PCM and the passive anti theft system or a suspect PCM. So what I advise the client was to uh, check the communication network 
And as you can see on the diagram, we need to look at the anti-theft system and we need to look at the PCM, all right? And also the wiring between the PCM and the anti-theft, okay? Now, the way I would advise people to troubleshoot this particular scenario is, after checking communications between the modules, all right, do an auto scan, a full auto scan of all the modules, and if you get an error code uh, that is a U1147, this means your patch module is faulty and you need to install a new one. All right. After you put in a new uh, patch module and you, you, know, you program it, you know, get it configured to the vehicle, erase all the codes, you try to erase all the codes and that U1147 still persists, that means your PCM is faulty and you need to install a new one. All right. So this is an example of when programming doesn't resolve the issue okay most of the time it's not the software okay usually it's because there's not a condition met all right maybe the the, the module has a problem this happens a lot all right when I uh, do program with my clients okay so in summary guys what I want for you to learn is if you're gonna do this yourself you need to have patience you need to allocate a lot of time to, to do programming, especially for the initial setup. Because as you saw, if you don't know what you're doing, you can encounter things that, you know, you're not gonna have a clue. You're not gonna have a clue. So just, you know, set some time just for the installation. Um, second, when programming a GM and the error code, um, the M695 appears, go back and select replace and reprogram then you can complete the procedure. Okay, you will get this. I got this, like I think it was yesterday. All right. And then lastly, OEMs update their platforms periodically. This usually results with installation issues. All right. Um, that's just the nature of the business. They don't want us to do this, guys. They really don't want us to do this. And I can see over time they're making it more difficult, but. You know what? That's just what we got to do. You know, you just have to have the mindset that you're not going to let them stop you from getting, you know, uh, results for your, your, your clients. All right. And then lastly, the sooner you get into programming, the quicker you'll be able to identify and address software issues like this. Guys, I didn't know this stuff off the top of my head. You know, I don't want to make it seem like I'm some like genius and stuff, but when you are surrounded by these um, uh, problems, you know, uh, that's something that I do very well. I like to solve problems. And that's how I accumulated all this, this, this knowledge and stuff. And you can't replace experience. You, you can't, you can't, all right? So use your J-Box, guys. Um, I'm telling you, this week, I would say I've been probably doing more programming than consulting on the tool, which is phenomenal. So the technology is here, guys. You guys really need to get on board, okay? So with that, guys, that's my video for today. If you like this content, please subscribe, give me a thumbs up, and uh, I hope you guys have a phenomenal week. Talk to you later. Bye.